Okay, we're talking about the Center 7D, Canon Center 7D. Okay, so this is the Center 7D. Um, really like it, really handy camera. I think it's kind of a workhorse. It'll handle most of the projects that you kind of throw at it, uh, both video and also uh, for photography. Um, rugged display, flip out screen, easy controls, everything's laid out. Handy camera. All right, so first and foremost, we're gonna talk about how to attach an actual lens before we even turn it on. The way that I've taught people in the past and how to do it is basically, uh, there's a release for it. When you hold down the release, you twist counterclockwise and it comes off. Now, whenever I take off the, the EVF cover on the camera, um, I wanna make sure that I also prep my lens as well. So the lens is prepped. I'm gonna go and release it. And when I do, I wanna make sure I face it down. So I face it down, that's been prepped. I look for a red dot, red dot, to the red dot. Um, I always interchange lens with the actual body facing down. I don't want any debris or anything getting into the actual body. So uh, face down, I bring the lens into it, red to red, and then you just go clockwise again. So reverse to take off, clockwise to put it back on. Okay, let's get into the menus. How we turn it on is right here. You're gonna go to the on button, and we're gonna talk about the menu system first. All right, so uh, here we're in the menu. Okay, uh, this is the first menu that you're going to see unless you've gone somewhere else. Uh, we're in section one, camera, and we're in subsection one. So one, one. Here we have the movie recording size, uh, digital zoom, which we don't really use, sound recording, uh, lens aberration correction, and uh, lens electronic manual focus. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is the uh, movie recording size. This is where you effectively change uh, the aspect ratio to whatever you want. Um, all right, so this is where you change uh, the resolution of what you're recording and also the frame rate on what you're recording at. Um, typically, right now, it's at the 1080 at 24. It's pretty solid. Um, the one that we primarily use for some slow motion stuff, uh, we can go up to 1080 at 60. It's decent. It's not, it's not the best. It's not 120 frames or anything crazy. Um, but it's good. It's a good place to start. Okay, so we'll leave it there at 1080 24. Um, and real quick, if, if you want to slow this down to in post, uh, you do a reduction down to, I think, about 40%. So, and that'll give you 24 frames a second, 23.98. All right, so we're going to go back here to the menu. We're going to go to the second section. Nothing here you should really mess with. Uh, this is pretty important, white balance. Um, I typically trust the camera for most things. Um, if there is, however, an issue, you can always do custom white balance and kind of change it uh, to wherever you want, you know, depending on wherever you're shooting. Um, we'll leave it there. Uh, custom white balance also, um, as you can see, I've, huh, I've already changed that. Picture style, uh, I do like neutral, and, and we'll go ahead and click the info button to change that. DSLRs tend to over sharpen things and also over contrast them, so we're gonna come down to the contrast as well. We want kind of a flatter image. Uh, desaturate ever so slightly uh, yeah um, color tone is fine um, this is this is if you haven't installed a C log profile into the camera which we can talk about how to do in a later video so we'll go and go menu go back as you can see um, I, I have put C log on all these cameras so uh, we'll leave it on neutral or you can do C log whichever one so uh, we'll do neutral I don't I don't think most people have C log next is uh, movie servo uh, I typically like movie servo um, it assures that the camera focuses throughout, throughout the entire process while you're recording. These cameras happen to have a touch focus AF on the LCD screen on the back, so that's pretty good. Um, face tracking does pretty good. I haven't had an issue with it. As long as you're properly lit, I think on higher end models, uh, we've messed with uh, with the C300. It's been kind of an issue, but with the Sensor 7D, even the kit lens, the 18 to 135, the higher end kit lens, uh, we just haven't had an issue with it. So we'll leave it. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, let's see real quick if there's anything else we kind of want to hit on besides white balance. I think that's all we're gonna hit on. Yeah, let's let's let that's all we're gonna hit on within the menu. I just kind of want to show you uh, kind of what to set it at when you start recording. Make sure that's okay. So now that we set this to 24, remember 24. All right, uh, we're gonna go into our actual menu. Now this is what you see um, whenever you turn the camera on. If you cycle through the info button, it'll it'll change that this, the heads up display. Um, I like as much information as possible. At the upper right, you'll see the histogram. It'll tell you uh, exposure settings and that sort of thing. The main thing you want, kind of want to focus on is if you see over towards the left, you'll see 23.98 again. Again, that's our frame rate. We're filming at uh, full HD, 1080p. Um, you want your shutter speed to be double that. Now, on this camera, it's the number changing at the bottom. That's our shutter speed. Uh, the reason why you want um, double 24, which obviously it's not hard. Double 24 is 48. 
uh, the closest we're gonna get to it on, on these DSLRs is 50, is because uh, that gives it the proper amount of motion blur whenever someone moves. Uh, so it doesn't seem too fake, doesn't seem too real. It, 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 it pretty much equates to whatever your eye sees in terms of motion blur um, and also film as well. So 24, we double it, we end up at 48. The closest we can get to it is 50. Uh, the number to the left, uh, sorry, the number to the right of that is gonna be your aperture. So you can change it with the scrolling wheel. And the ISO, there's actually a dedicated ISO button uh, on the camera. So we just press the ISO button and then we can kind of uh, dictate that. Uh, you typically want to keep your ISO as low as possible just to maintain um, as much quality as, as you can. Um, so I, I typically on these smaller and uh, APS-C sensor cameras, I won't go above 1600. Um, and, and anything below that should be usable. Uh, you can always do a little bit of a noise correction in post. And we can talk about that also in another video. Um, so we'll, we'll leave it at 400. Um, that's basically it. That's basically your, your setup. Uh, you can press Q to quick change any of the features in the in the menu. Uh, you won't really want to change anything unless you want to do some slower motion stuff. Um, so if you just hover over the Full HD, we'll go to uh, 1080 at 60, and now 60 times two puts us at 120. And again, the closer we get to 120 is 125, so make sure you stay at 125. Um, but yeah, shutter speed is always double uh, what your frame rate is, so. Uh, we'll go back to 50 and change that back down since uh, since that was uh, since that's what we're going to primarily be using. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Alrighty.